And good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Purcell. I'm the Vice President of Policy and Programs at the Atmospheric Fund. And we are a public agency that invests in climate solutions across the greater Toronto and Hamilton area. I'm here to tell you about a project that started out as an energy efficiency retrofit, but became something much more than that. The project I'm presenting was undertaken in partnership with Toronto Community Housing. They are the largest housing provider in Canada, providing homes for nearly 60,000 low-income families. As a result of chronic underinvestment in community housing, they have a capital repair backlog of over a billion dollars. Through this project, we completed major energy retrofits in seven buildings that are home to about 1,300 families, a mix of seniors and young families. We aim to reduce energy use and carbon emissions by 30% while developing a model for delivering future energy retrofits in their portfolio and beyond. And we largely succeeded in these objectives. The project creates over $450,000 in annual utility cost savings and 920 tons in carbon reductions. Savings are guaranteed for 10 years with quarterly monitoring reports to ensure problems are quickly identified and corrected. But energy and carbon reductions are only half of the story. The other half of the story is about providing better homes and greater opportunities for the people living in these communities. People living below the poverty line, mostly from racialized communities, struggling to build a better future or simply to live out their twilight years with dignity. We asked ourselves early on, can an energy retrofit help people in some small way with those struggles? We came up with two ways. First, it can make their homes healthier and more comfortable. Quality housing is the foundation for health and well being. Poor quality housing is linked to negative health outcomes as well as reduced employment and educational opportunities. Before putting shovel to ground, we surveyed residents to understand their perceptions of health and comfort conditions in their homes. We also instrumented the buildings to monitor air quality and thermal comfort, collecting over 30 million data points. What we found was eye opening. Both the sensor data and and surveys showed that thermal comfort and air quality were serious problems. It became clear that the same outdated heating and ventilation systems responsible for high energy use were also negatively impacting health and comfort. Sustained exposure to temperatures over 26 degrees Celsius is strongly correlated with increased mortality and morbidity. Yet we found that these homes spent the majority of the hours in the year above that threshold, even during the winter. Oversized heating systems combined with no thermostats resulted in chronic exposure to unhealthy temperatures. Fresh air supply was 50% below modern code standards and ductwork was so choked with dust that the term fresh was wholly inappropriate. Complaints of odors and secondhand smoke were frequent. To quote one resident, the smell of smoke and marijuana from the neighbors is making my children sick. She desperately wanted to move out of the building, but she had nowhere else to go. All of this provided critical input to the design process, helping us better prioritize retrofit measures. We replaced aging ventilation systems, increasing fresh air supply by over 50%, and we cleaned all ductwork. And this before and after picture shows you just how badly that was needed. We also replaced outdated heating systems with much smaller and more efficient systems and we installed smart thermostats to give something residents uh, clearly asked us for and something most of us take for granted, control over their own heating. We repeated our surveys and measurements post retrofit to assess improvements in health and comfort. Exposure to extreme heat was reduced by 34%. In the four buildings where we made the deepest improvements, residents reported a 38% reduction in symptoms associated with poor air quality and a 58% reduction in absenteeism from work or school. The second way an energy retrofit can help people struggling with poverty is through employment opportunities. We wondered, can our project create employment opportunities for community housing res retro residents, enabling them to work directly on improving their own communities? The answer was, of course it can. We found a local social enterprise called Building Up dedicated to training and employing people facing barriers to employment in the construction industry. They provided trained workers with at least 50% being Toronto community housing residents and all of them from marginalized or underrepresented groups. 
They worked right alongside our conventional contractors with outstanding results. 90% of these individuals have since gone on to apprenticeships or careers in the trades, often with other companies that worked on the project. Building Up now does a million dollars a year in business with Toronto Community Housing and is working with other housing operators in the region. We're now working to scale up our partnership with Toronto Community Housing and expanding it to other housing providers across the region. Last year, we completed our eighth building with them with a ninth approved and a 10th under development. And we have a four building project with another municipal housing provider in preliminary design. With each new retrofit, we're targeting deeper carbon reductions, greater health and comfort improvements, and more employment opportunities for community housing residents. By the end of this year, we aim to have 3,000 homes in design or construction for deep retrofits. Buildings are the largest source of carbon emissions in our region, most of it from housing. Investments in housing have the potential to dramatically reduce emissions while improving health and comfort and creating green jobs. Nowhere is this more true or more necessary than in low-income community housing. Across our region, there are over 100,000 community housing units. We aim to see them all retrofitted by 2030. Doing so would require at least 6 billion in investment, but would dramatically reduce carbon emissions while generating over 130,000 job years of employment. But more importantly, it would provide better homes, new opportunities, and a foundation for success for the families who live in these communities. Thank you.